So today I wanted to cover the basics of creating a plugin for yourself, as well as uh, touch on some of the utility methods that can come in very handy for a project like that. And why would you want to create a plugin for yourself? Well, if you run into an edge case where maybe the, the, the GSAP engine itself, the internals don't handle a very particular property in the way that you want, um, maybe you want to create some custom behavior, uh, maybe things have to be formatted a very specific way that isn't exactly standard, um, you, can, you can kind of hijack a property and then apply it in whatever way you want. And so here we're going to cover um, a, a somewhat advanced plugin. Uh, the goal isn't to cover all of the complexities or everything you could possibly do with a plugin. Um, I'm just going to cover the basics with this example blur plugin, which is not an official plugin. This is just kind of a demo of, um, you know, th there's not wide browser support for filters right now, um, but some people still really want to use them in, uh, you know, WebKit browsers and such. Uh, so here is an example of a blur plugin that can be used uh, in GSAP 3. So the uh, I'm wrapping everything here in an iffy just so that I can declare some uh, variables up here that don't kind of leak out into the global scope and I can reuse them uh, you know inside the plugin and so the key here is this gsap.register plugin you pass in an object that has a few of these properties so uh, the name would be an obvious uh, you know important one and this is what will be we kind of um, it's the property that is going to get hijacked um, so that whenever let's scroll down to this tween down here I've got a gsap.2 um, and notice that I have this blur value that I want to animate to a number of eight but there isn't a blur it's not like h1s on the page have a blur property or a style value that's called blur no it this is I'm using this because I have this plugin that is gonna hijack that so that um, whenever GSAP sees this blur uh, value come in, it's gonna say, oh, I've got a plugin for that. Let me just feed this value in there and let it do its thing. And so when a, uh, a, a tween that has a blur property found in it starts for the very first time, actually right before it renders for the first time, it's gonna call this init method, which gets past the target, which would be the element, only one element. So even if we had, let's say this, this tween down here had, um, let's say on the page, we've got 10 H1s, uh, you know, this, this animation will animate all of them. But in terms of feeding things to your plugin, it's going to create an instance of this blur plugin for each and every target, so that you can rely on the fact that this target is just going to be one element, not a collection of them. And then this end value is whatever the person passed in. So in this case, if we scroll down, we see that it's the number eight. It could be a string, it could be an object, selector text, whatever you want, you would be in charge of handling that. But it's going to get fed in here as the end value. Let me scroll up here and just quickly cover this whole get method, which is uh, it allows uh, GSAP to get values. So in this case, let's say that, um, well, I've got this this uh, event listener, this click event listener that is uh, printing out the results of this get property. So GSAP3 introduces gsap.get property where you can feed in an element. In this case, I only have one H1 on the page. That's why it's fine to pass in selector text because this is really only uh, to return the property value for one element. Um, and then I give the name of the property that you want it to, to get. And again, an H1 doesn't normally have a blur property on it, but GSAP is going to say, oh, I've got a plugin that, and does that plugin have a get method on it? Oh, in this case it does. So I'm just going to feed that target in there and then whatever it spits back, that's going to be what the results are down here. 
So in, in my demo, when, I'm, uh, when I run this, you'll see that I'll be able to click on the screen and print out the current value at any point um, of the blur. Okay, so let's get back up here to the, the juicy details. Um, and before I move on, let me touch on the fact that there's this check prefix where filter is, is not supported in every single browser out there. Some browsers uh, have no support for any kind of filter. Some browsers require a prefix. Um, so maybe WebKit filter or uh, Mo's filter for Mozilla or MS filter, um, that type of thing. So this utility method, you feed in the unprefixed property and then it does the work of trying to figure out is, is that unprefixed one supported? Um, okay, yeah, it is. Then I'll just return that right back. So in the browser I'm using right now, it does support natively uh, filter as a property. So that's what this is gonna get set to. But if I was in a browser that required WebKit filter, um, then that's what's gonna get returned here for the, the blur property. All right, so we use that later on. I'm not gonna go through all of this code. Uh, I'm just gonna touch on some important aspects. So again, init gets called once when the tween uh, begins and or right before it renders for the first time. And then I'm just going through all this work to basically grab the string, this filter string, and, and then I'm uh, recording the target so that I can, in my render method, which um, this is the other key method, it, this gets called on every tick of the animation. Um, but I need to be able to know which target I'm updating and then I'm also creating this interp. There's nothing magical about any of these property names, by the way. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, but I just chose interp and I'm tapping into the interpolate utility method, which is really useful for plugins like this. And hopefully you watch the other video where I cover this in more depth, but you just feed in a starting value and ending value and then it's, it returns a method or a, a function that you can then feed in a progress value and it will give you that linearly interpolated value in between. So if I you know start with a blur of zero px, it's gonna find the numbers in the strings and, and let's say that my ending value is a blur of 20 pix, uh, pixels, then, and then I feed in a progress value of 0.5, then it will figure that out and it will return, it'll run it through the interpolate method and it'll return a blur of 10 px. And so I'm just assigning that to the, uh, the target's style, whatever the property name we figured out, maybe it's prefix, maybe it isn't, and it's as simple as that. So this, again, this interpolate method is super useful for this type of thing. Um, I think that a lot of these plugins that, that um, that you could build for yourself, it can be very, very simple. You don't need all of this code. Um, this is a little bit complex just because uh, filters can have a whole bunch of different values in them. It could have a, a grayscale value. It could have a whole bunch of other things. So we just need to make sure that they're in the right order um, and for, to set up for the interpolate method. Anyway, so now that we have our plugin defined up there one time, now, you know, since it's registered, now GSAP will find any uh, animations with blur on them, and it will route that into our plugin. So you don't have to keep creating, you know, defining the same plugin over and over, over again. You just load it once, and now all your animations can have a blur on them in this case. And so what I'm gonna do is run this, and you should see that it's going to figure out that it started at a, a blur of zero and then it's it's uh, animating it to a blur of eight. And we're handling all of that behind the scenes in our plugin. If I click, you'll see that, you know, down here, the value is updating each time I click. So again, we are tapping into this whole gsap.get property um, and it's all working flawlessly. So that, is the basics of creating your own plugin and registering it. Define a name, define an init, do whatever you need to do inside of the init, and then uh, 
you know, apply your values in whatever way you need to in your render method and you're golden. Lots of flexibility. Enjoy.